You were listening to ChartingWealth.com for Thursday, the 8th of February, 2018. Everything on the board is down. The S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100 down the biggest, TLT, 20-year bonds down, and gold down. Let's jump first into the S&P 500. Again, closer to a weekly vertical crossover going down. We may have that at the end of the week, unless, of course, Thursday and Friday are big up days. This is just the first three days of the two of the weekly candle. So again, it's not a complete candle until it's drawn. We don't trade it until we have a trend. We are not forecasters. We are trend followers. That is the way. That is the way to be victorious in the market. Because when we see those weekly vertical crossovers going up or down like we saw on the S&P 500 back in September, what did we see happen? We had an entry point around 250. And where did we end up topping out? Somewhere around 286. That's not bad from, from October up until about halfway through December. That's absolutely beautiful. In anybody's book, $36 on a $250 ETF over those few months is an incredible run-up. Now, what can we do if indeed we have a weekly vertical crossover going down? If the market's really going to tank and going to tank for a while, then my friends, we will ride it down. You can do that either practicing puts or an inverse fund like the like one that follows the S&P 500 or the Qs. We've talked about the ones that follow gold and the 20-year bonds. The problem with those is they're so illiquid. But we'll talk more about that. For those of you who want to know more right now, please go take our training. It's about inverse ETFs, what to do when markets crash. That is at the website chartingwealth.com. Let's jump into this market. We see that we're getting closer and closer to a crossover going down. Once that's drawn and complete, we will call it if indeed it occurs, and it looks more and more likely that it will. Derivative oscillators big time down in the negative. I mean, my word, you got to go, you got to go way back, way, way, way back to see this kind of big turnover. When we go from the weekly to the two day, what do we see? Well, of course, we saw things and we talked about this starting to level out before things really hammered down. And now we see that we are into our, our completed candle for the 7th. And again, it is a strong down candle, the S&P 500 down 0.54% for the day. So again, strong down movement. That prior candle ending on the 5th of January pushed through the weekly trend line and things just trended even lower. Derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. Price percent oscillator moving down, not at the same strong angle of the prior candle, but still down. Remember, we had that, that little bit of recovery. What do we see on the four-hour chart? Well, that's indeed interesting, isn't it? We see where things bottomed somewhere on Tuesday morning around, well, uh, Tuesday morning, and then in the afternoon moved up, and then we see, as far as our Heiken Ashi average pace candlesticks go, we saw an up move in the morning on Wednesday, and then things moving down, and what we see is a red open box with a long wick on top. Again, shows us some indecision tending down there. We see the derivative oscillator kinked on further down. The price percent, I'm sorry, the price percent oscillator kinked further down. The derivative oscillator has stopped losing downward momentum. In fact, it's moving up. So that's because of the two green candles that we see in the afternoon on the 6th and the morning of the 7th. So we'll continue to keep our eye on things and see just where they go. We'd like things to settle out a little bit, even there's going to be a crossover going down so that we have a good entry point come Monday morning. More about that on the comprehensive review and forecast over the weekend. That's going to be a couple of days from now. Back to the weekly chart. We'll head to the Qs, the NASDAQ 100 down 1.29%, the biggest downer for the day. Again, we've got a red candle with a much longer wick, even longer than the candle it looks like itself. Getting close, but no crossover. I mean, of course, there's going to be one till the end of the week, but maybe one at the end of the week. I'm guessing there probably will be. And we also see the 
derivative oscillator in the negative. So we'll see if that price percent oscillator crosses over going down. We next go to the two-day chart, and we see that it also is another strong down candle. Derivative oscillator gained a lot of energy. Price percent oscillator moving down. Not at the strong angle it had been on that two-day candle ending the fifth, but still strong down movement. And as we look at the four-hour chart, what are we going to see there? Same kind of thing we saw in the S&P 500. Sort of bottomed out there at a uh, around 157.38 and then bounced up from that point. Ended the day with a red spinning top. Almost a doji means indecision, tending down, derivative oscillator heading down, price percent oscillator losing downward momentum. So we'll continue to keep our eyes on things. Who knows where this is going to go, but we will be ready to pounce come Monday if we have weekly vertical crossovers. What do we see on bonds? Has this not been a beautiful trade, my friends? We had that weekly vertical crossover going down back on the 5th of January, and it just gets better and better and better, down 0.95% for the day. Derivative oscillator heating up, price percent oscillator bounding down on that weekly chart. Two-day chart, we're well below the two-day trend line, and again, looking beautiful as the price percent oscillator trundles down and the derivative oscillator continues to gain downward energy. And again, we see just a beautiful red down candle, which is what we want on an inverse trade, on a short. And that's what we called on this, and it has been absolutely beautiful. Okay, let's look at the last thing on the four-hour chart. We talked about it, um, that there had been some uptick over the 6th, Tuesday, and then we saw on Wednesday, downward progress resumed. But again, keep your eye where we reached the bottom bottom as far as our Heikinashi candlesticks at about 119. We haven't penetrated. We didn't close below that. So again, we want to see that downward momentum and energy continue. If things sort of flatten out here, then we might have a spike back up, and it might be time to close this very successful trade. Okay, folks, lastly, we go to gold. Gold down almost half a percent, 0.47 percent. Gold topped out at a beautiful high after our weekly vertical crossover going up. That occurred back on the 5th of January. Gold spiked up for the following three weeks, started losing energy over the course of the week ending the 2nd of February, and of course, really started to move down after that. We don't have a crossover going down yet. The weekly vertical crossover it has not occurred. We're still in a confirmed up move as far as the weekly chart goes, still in the green as far as the derivative oscillator and the price percent oscillator, although it's heading down, it hasn't crossed yet, but we do have some strong down movement enough that, of course, pulled us out of the play after all that great upward momentum. But as we look at the two-day chart, that's where our real problem occurs. We had that crossover. It is now confirmed at the close of the day on Wednesday. We do have now a problem. The two-day chart is going down. Weekly chart is going up. When you have that kind of conflict, there is no trade in gold at that point. So again, even if the four-hour chart rotates over going up, we're going to have to have a crossover going up on the two-day before anything presents itself or a crossover going down on the weekly, and that might take a while. So we see the derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum, price percent oscillator moving strong, and prices, of course, below the weekly and the two-day. And lastly, what's the four-hour chart telling us? Well, it's looking pretty again, isn't it? The four-hour chart crossed over going down back on Monday, the 29th of January, slid sideways for a while, then dropped on the 2nd of February, slid sideways for a while, then started dropping precipitously on the 6th through the 7th of February. So we keep wanting to see our four-hour chart work for us again. It got really stiff on us and not giving us some accurate signals uh, when it started messing up and we weren't having the kind of trending that we wanted. But things are looking better. The signals were just too quick. And again, you want, you want to have the fine movements that we've seen over the past, well, yes, over the past year. Some beautiful moves where gold just crossed over on that four-hour chart. And But for a couple of instances, 
you know, really moved nicely. And those instances showed up as of late. Folks, that's where we are. Hoping this four-hour chart will start working for us as a total trading chart again in gold. As we end the day, total down day for everything. But again, there's money to be made in down place too, my friends. And we'll see if the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 are setting us up for some short plays starting this next week. Don't know it yet, but it may be happening. God bless. We love to hear from you. Please always feel free to email us, cw at chartingwealth.com, and do sign up. Please go and sign up for our daily market review. Just put in your name and your email address, and you'll get all the great information, including, including the discount we have for those of you who are ready to get serious and subscribe to get to go from freestockcharts.com to the paid service TC2000. We'll save you 25 bucks. We have a link there for it. Pick your program and start moving. Okay, folks, God bless. All the best from the whole team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.